From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is your weekly sports update on WSU's Cougar Corner. Welcome to WSU's Cougar Corner on Merle News 8. I'm Jay Slaughter. And I'm Brittany McIntosh. Thanks for joining us. After a season full of impressive performances, we finally know the list of Heisman Trophy finalists that will make the trip to New York. The list begins with University of Oklahoma's quarterback, Baker Mayfield, who threw for over 4,000 passing yards. Also making the list is Louisville quarterback, Lamar Jackson, who won 2016 Heisman, and Stanford running back, Bryce Love, who rushed for almost 2,000 yards and scored 17 touchdowns. Just hours after the Heisman finals were announced, was Washington State quarterback Luke Falk won the award for the top walk-on in college football, beating out two-time Bullsworth winner Baker Mayfield. This is the third time Luke Falk traveled to Arkansas for the Bullsworth ceremony, but the first time he's coming home with an award. The WSU and Gonzaga women's basketball team faced off earlier this week for a friendly rivalry game in the Beasley Coliseum. The Zags were able to defeat the Cougs with the final score of 64-56 Wednesday night. WSU had a chance to win. Gonzaga had 26 turnovers, but the Cougs only shot 28% on the night. The Cougs' next game will be in Boise when the Cougars take on the Broncos. After a 6-0 start to the season, the WCU men's basketball team have now lost two in a row. Derek Baker will travel to Moscow to see the Cougs face off against the Idaho Vandals. The WSU Cougars traveled to Moscow to take on the Idaho Vandals in a battle of the Palouse Wednesday night. Leading up to the game, Coach Ernie Kent identified the strengths of the Vandals and the keys to success for the Cougs. This is a team that they run a lot of sets. They're very good at what they do because of their experience. They can go second, third options on sets. You're going to stay disciplined and defending them. And then I think for us, it's just playing with a lot of confidence. And when we play with confidence, we're a tough team to deal with. The Vandals end up taking this one at home, winning by a margin of 27 points. After the game, Coach Verlin said that teamwork and good ball movement were huge components to the win tonight. Our ability to pick each other up, our ability to communicate on the floor, um, and our ability to pass the ball uh, tonight. Uh, we had no selfish players out there, and we haven't much all year, but, but I, I thought more than any night this season, we did a great job of passing the ball and getting, making the right plays and making shots for our teammates. And when you play in this game, it's the whole state of Idaho behind you and against the whole state of Washington. And when it's at home, you feel the energy, you feel the love, you know. And I think that's what helped us too. When it's a packed house, I mean, you can have nothing but goosebumps and excitement. The Cougs will look to end their two-game losing streak when they travel to El Paso to take on UTEP Saturday night at 6. Derek Baker, Murrow News 8. The WSU's men's rugby team competed for the first league match against Boise State. Jesse Maywall explains how the team is getting ready for the upcoming season. The men's rugby team competed for the first time this season with 15 players per team. Fans believe the team is playing stronger. We see more continuity or teamwork playing. The men's rugby team finished their seventh season with a record above 500. Fans were excited to see the whole team being utilized. Well, sevens is such a quick game. It's the lighter guys, it's the faster guys, and and 15s, the, the, the heavyweights can come in and really exert themselves and have a lot of fun in the middle, um, bashing each other and, and, you know, even scoring tries. While the rugby team has faced adversity in the past, the team got a win today. They now move forward to 1-0 in the regular season. And this is our first game and really last game of this semester. So it's a really good starting point to come back in January when we start off. We have a few weeks of practice, and then we have about eight games straight right after that of our 15th league match. And uh, it's, a, it's a great, great starting point, great start for the guys. Returning members on the team have helped keep the club moving in a positive direction. We've got a few new players, a few returning players, and those returning players have really been able to step up and help uh, sort of lead the team and make sure that we're doing what we want to be doing and playing the game that we want to play. Men's rugby team competes again in January. The team is always looking for more members to join the club. Jesse Maywald, Murrow News 8. Yeah, rugby is very physical, but I can't believe our basketball team has lost two games in a row. I know, maybe it's the stress of finals, but hopefully after winter break they'll get their mojo back and we'll be back in the game. Yeah, I hope so. When we come back, we'll show you the highlights from yesterday's NBA games. And stick around because we have the Saints vs. Falcons game later on. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. 
Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> find yours at discovertheforest.org. Last night, the Lakers traveled to Philadelphia to take on the 76ers in what could have been a dunk contest. We started the game off with Joel Embiid getting 40 out of 50 on his dunk, while Brandon Ingram came down with the reverse slam a little bit after. Let's check that out. He catches the ball here, swings it over for the reverse. Right after that, Ben Simmons came right down the lane, had a beautiful pass to the, for the double pump jam. We head to the fourth quarter and we see Rashawn Holmes. He stamped his ticket into the dunk contest. Right over here, bow, another dunk from him. But it wasn't dunking that ended this game, it was perimeter shooting. Brandon Ingram catches a long ball and hits a three to seal the W for the Lakers. That's the ninth win for the Lakers on the season. That's game time. <laughs> we head to Houston, we head to Utah. The Houston Rockets defeated the Utah Jazz last night, 112 to 101. James Harden scored 29 points, as he will forever have the green light in Houston. Point guard Chris Paul added a double-double to his resume, dropping 13 assists and 18 points. Big man Ryan Anderson shot 9 for 11, pouring in 23 points. The Houston Rockets are currently in first place in the Western Conference with a 19-4 record. Meanwhile, the Utah Jazz sit at eighth place with a 13-13 record as they're playing 500 basketball right now. We head over to our last game in Mexico. The Brooklyn Nets play the Oklahoma City Thunder on Thursday night. One, they won 100-95. Chris LeVert led the scoring for Brooklyn with 21 points, followed by 17 points from Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. Russell Westbrook played a complete game, scoring 31 points, passing for six assists, and grabbing eight rebounds. The Nets played without guards Jeremy Lin and D'Angelo Russell due to injuries. Also, they traded point forward Trevor Booker to Philadelphia right before the game. The win improves Brooklyn's record to 10-14 and 14 on the year, while the Thunder dropped to 11-13 and 13 on the season. Coming up after the break, lots of news to talk about the NFL, so do not go away. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. The Atlanta Falcons beat the New Orleans Saints last night 20-17 to, to climb the NFC chart. Both teams had a short week coming off Sunday games. The Saints running back Alvin Kamara exited the game in the first quarter with a possible concussion. Each team scored one touchdown before the half, but the Falcons had to play comeback after... Matt Ryan threw three interceptions in just nine plays. Once the Falcons claimed the lead, the Falcons defense held off the Saints with a game-winning interception from Deion Jones. Cleveland Browns fired VP Sashi Brown for being unable to produce more than one, two, one or two wins over the last few seasons. The owners decided to, to skip to keep Hugh Jackson around for another season despite the 1-27 record, but they hired former Kansas City executive John Dorsey as their new general manager. 
NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell signed a five-year contract extension that could be worth $200 million if financial goals and incentives are met. This came after rumors that Dallas Cowboy owner Jerry Jones attempted to halt the league's compensation committee from completing the extension. Compared to players before this season, Detroit Lions quarterback Matthew Stafford became the highest played payer, signing a five-year $135 million contract. Coming up, the MLB offseason trade rumors start to heat up. One team has already made a trade. Find out after the break. Don't worry. 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. No more pencils, no more books. No more teachers, dirty looks. School's out for summer. What this place needed was better graduation rates. So we worked with schools like Henry Ford High, and now they're up 18%. To help us do more good this year, go to unitedway.org, because great things happen when we live united. The Seattle Mariners made a trade yesterday that would bring former batting champion D. Gordon to Seattle. The former second baseman will play center field for the first time in his career. In addition to the Mariners, they will also receive $1 million in international money. The Marlins will receive the Mariners' number two and number seven prospect, a right-handed pitcher, Robert Duggar. The Marlins might be involved in another big trade soon as the team looks to trade home run champ Gian Carlos Stanton for salary purposes. The Marlins still owe Stanton $295 million of his original $325 million contract. Stanton's no trade clause in his contract means he can decline a trade if he doesn't want to play for the potential trade partner. The reigning National League MVP says he will hold out for either New York Yankees or the Los Angeles Dodgers. This was our last show of the semester. I hope you guys enjoyed all the news we brought to you guys. Yes, it's been such a good semester, and it's going to be a great winter break as well. It will, it will. That is all we have for you in this edition of WSU's Cougar Corner on Murrow News 8. Join us every Friday night, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.